In this video, we're going to explain different methods of transport across the cell surface membrane. So this obviously links to cell membrane structure and it links back to GCSE where you do diffusion, osmosis and active transport. But for A-level, there are a couple of extra methods that we need to know and a little bit more detail as well, just about each individual method. Now, this could potentially be like a five or six mark question on an exam paper where they ask you to name and describe or explain different transport methods across the cell membrane. So let's go through and kind of imagine it's an extended response question. So the first method of transport we need to know about for A-level is simple diffusion. Now you learn about this at GCSE, you just called it diffusion, but now at A-level we know that there are two different types of diffusion, so we're going to differentiate between them and we're going to call the first type simple diffusion. Now, simple diffusion across the cell surface membrane is the diffusion of small, non-polar, or that means kind of molecules with no uneven distribution of charge. So small, non-polar molecules or substances can diffuse across the phospholipid bilayer. So they can simply diffuse between those fatty acid tails of the phospholipids. Um, it's passive, so it doesn't require any energy from ATP, and these molecules will diffuse down their concentration gradient, which we learned at GCSE, or we can say simple diffusion, the molecules move from a higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Now next we have facilitated diffusion, which basically is what it says on the tin. It's diffusion with a bit of help, it's facilitated. So this would be used for maybe you've got larger molecules or you've got charged or polar substances. So it might be something like glucose or an amino acid, which is a little bit larger. It might be an ion, which has a charge. So it cannot simply diffuse across the phospholipid bilayer. So instead it has to use facilitated diffusion. It's still passive and it's still down their concentration gradient. So it's still going from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration, but facilitated diffusion is using a carrier or a channel protein. And these are proteins which are embedded in the cell surface membrane. They are what we call integral proteins, so they span both sides of the phospholipid bilayer. A channel protein is literally just a channel. It's just kind of like a water-filled channel that will allow these charged or polar molecules to simply diffuse through. Uh, a carrier protein is a little bit different because it does change shape to move the molecule across the bilayer. But for A-level, we can just say that facilitated diffusion can use either a carrier protein or a channel protein. But the substance is not just diffusing through the phospholipid bilayer because it can't because of the nature of that molecule. Okay, let's move on to osmosis. Again, it's one we did at GCSE, this one, but we can use different vocab. So osmosis is the diffusion of water specifically. And instead of talking about a concentration gradient, at A level, we're gonna say water moves or diffuses by osmosis from a higher water potential, that's the symbol for water potential which you can use, to a lower water potential. Now again, it's passive and one of the similarities is the water is moving down its concentration gradient, just like with diffusion, but we're calling it a water potential gradient because it's going from a region where there's a higher concentration of water, which is a higher water potential, to a lower concentration of water, which is a lower water potential. And we should only be using osmosis, obviously, for the movement of water. 
Right, number four, we've got active transports. Another one you did at GCSE. Now, the thing with active transport is it does require energy. Okay, so I'll start with that. It requires energy from ATP. So cells that do a lot of active transport will have a lot of mitochondria to produce a lot of ATP to provide the energy for active transport. And um, what else? It uses a carrier protein, which changes shape to physically move the molecule across the membrane. And the important one is it moves molecules, or you can just say substances, uh, against their concentration gradient. Or again, you can say from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration. But it's against the concentration gradient, not down the concentration gradient. And this is why it requires energy from ATP. So the carrier protein can physically change shape and move that molecule against its concentration gradient. Finally, we have co-transport, brand new for A-level biology. And I, to be honest, I could do like a half hour video just on co-transport. But this uses a co-transport protein. Or you can call it a carrier protein because it is a type of carrier protein. But specifically, I call it a co-transport protein because it's moving two molecules or two substances simultaneously. Now, for example, when you learn about absorption in the ileum of the small intestine, you'll learn about how glucose and amino acids are absorbed via co-transport, where a sodium ion diffuses in down its concentration gradient through a co-transport protein, carrying with it a molecule of glucose or an amino acid. So they are moved into the cell together via a co-transport protein. That's why it's called co-transport. Okay, so we've got five processes basically to learn for A-level. Simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, osmosis, active transport and co-transport. You should be able to describe the key features of each. Um, so always think things like, does it require energy? Does it require a protein? Which direction is the substance moving? They're kind of the three comparative um, ideas that we should know for these different methods of transport. Make sure you're following me on TikTok as well, because we are going to post some more questions on this particular topic, including looking at the actual structure of the cell membrane, labelling the cell membrane, which obviously goes quite nicely with this video.